What's up gamers, and I'm sure you want your Dom Mommy J to step all over you with her ultimate move, but to actually make that happen, you need to build her correctly, because she won't be signing a contract for you, she won't be stepping on you, if you don't give her the correct build that she needs to function properly, so that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, everything that you are going to be needing for Jade before she actually comes out to the game, because you can go ahead and farm everything in game right now for so you might as well go ahead and do that, right, but before we talk about everything you need to build her, because I will be showing you a graph of literally everything you need to build her let's talk about kind of what she does first the skill moves you'll be targeting one ally on the field giving them a speed buff and then dealing additional damage with that ally whenever you're attacking with them it's gonna be based off of what jade's damage actually is on top of this guys it will be decreasing the user's hp every time you use this so you will maybe want to make sure you have a sustain on the team if the team is not very self-sufficient itself but that's not the main bread and butter that's gonna be the talent which we'll talk about after talking about the ultimate move because the ultimate move will be targeting every single enemy on the field it'll be hitting them all and on top of this is going to be increasing jade's follow-up attack or talent multiplier by 80 percent this means her follow-up moves which is inherently what the talent does that damage is going to be increased by 80 percent and it's going to take effect two different times so that means she has two enhanced follow-up attacks kind of like how topaz will work with that now let's go ahead and talk about the talent now because the talent's absolutely insane first of all you'll be getting charge points back for every enemy you hit on the field this means if you have jade let's say hit a basic attack right which hits three enemies you'll be getting three stacks from this and then for every single target the person that's buffed that you have the skill on hits an enemy that's an extra stack as well so this means you want to be running her with a lot of aoe based unit because you'll be getting more stacks up this means you get more efficient damage out with her but not only this every time she uses a follow-up attack she gets a stack of pond asset i think is the name of it and this will be giving her a crit damage buff and this multiplier can go up pretty far especially with the talents now obviously we cannot talk about what her bonus abilities do or what stat bonuses she's getting in her actual traces because Hoyoverse hasn't released that yet. Thank you, Hoyoverse. But right now, I'll show you on screen every single material that you need when farming for Miss Jade. As far as getting the trace materials, it's actually going to be from fighting this new Calyx here. This gives the new Iridition one. So just make sure you're farming this one up to get all the Iridition ones that you actually need. Her level essential materials are also farmable as well. You just need to farm this little T Rex man here to get everything you need for that. Now, with all the boring Ukraine stinky stuff out of the way that no one wants to read, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what her best light cones are because this is the basis of how you get a great character and maybe how you get her to step on you or maybe just sign you a contract to hurt yourself or, or whatever the the main draw with the con anyways let's go ahead and talk about the best in salt light cones now obviously her, her best in salt light cones are going to be her signature light cone her signature light cone is amazing can't really talk about what it does we can talk more about it later whenever we talk about e1 versus s1 when we get more information but as of right now her best in slot light cone is going to be her signature light cone. Other light cones you can use though. One of the main reasons why I like the Eurydition class is because they have some pretty solid free to play light cones. First of all, Eternal Calculus, which is the new Herda Shop light cone. This is going to be really good because first of all, it increases her attack, which might be what everything scales off of in her kit. You want attack for your character. Yippee yippee. And then on top of this is giving a pretty substantial speed buff as well. So really good option here. If you want to use Eternal Calculus, that's fine. You could also use the Seriousness of Breakfast as another free to play option just because of the fact it gives you damage bonus and attack bonus that's all really good fine and dandy for her kit now other options that you could potentially use this is a very niche scenario but you could use the day the cosmos fell which is the new pinaconia light cone that we got it's the new memory of chaos light cone right basically this is going to be increasing her attack by 24 percent and giving her a crit damage bonus as long as you're hitting enemies with the same type right as long as two enemies on the field are being hit with the same type she's going to be getting a 40 percent crit damage bonus which if you're actually struggling with crit damage this could be really beneficial to you but like i said i think her crit damage will be easy enough to build where you don't have to worry about this just want to let this be known as an option if you are struggling to get the crit damage that you need let's say you have the crit rate already this is a great option for you and then we also know if you have Jing Yuan signature light cone uh, this this can work on her too it doesn't really give an attack buff which she kind of wants but it, it can still work on her just because it is going to be increasing follow-up damage and giving her some ultimate damage as well so that's really fine dandy and cool there as well today is another peaceful day can also work on her if you do have the battle pass light cone there are just a lot of erudition light cones that actually work well on her that i don't think you can really go wrong even if you're playing like pure fiction you can use himiko's signature light cone and it works just fine there as well there are just a lot of options you can use really pick what you want like i said the first three options that i mentioned are going to be probably her best in slots but others can be put to replace if you don't have those you might not get as good results but you don't really have to worry about it and completely not working at all with her kit now let's go ahead and talk about t Team synergies because team synergy is going to be super super important especially with how we're going to be building her at the end of the video so let's go ahead and first talk about what dps that can work with miss jay 
Jade. Truthfully and honestly, to me, Jade seems like an Iridition support character because she really plays off of how many like enemies you're hitting with your allies, right? So she works well with Himiko or can work well with Himiko if you're running a healer on the team because Himiko does have an 80% HP threshold. If you get below that point, then you're not getting 15% crit rate, which can be kind of detrimental if you're relying on that crit rate for her kit. So you will probably want to run a healer in that circumstance there. Other people that she's good with though, Herda works amazingly well because Herda hits just about every single enemy on the field, which will charge her up to hell and back. Like I'm talking charges, super charges her move there. Also Argenti can work because Argenti hits every single enemy on the field. Mr. King Yuan can hurt because his skills hit every single enemy on the field. His ult hits every single enemy on the field and his lightning lord hits every enemy on the field. So Jin Yuan is actually a strong contender here as well. We love when our general gets these little indirect buffs, don't we? Also, I do want to propose something here. QQ. I think QQ and her could work really well together, especially with the build that I'm proposing today. Because if you run a slow Jade, I think that it could help QQ out in skill point efficiency. Give QQ the option of being able to run an attack boot as well and still get up to 134 speed, which is really, really nice. And with QQ's ability to hit all enemies on the field, this means you could run a team with QQ, Jade, Sparkle, and also Fushuan as well. Have a full quantum team. And I feel like her sub DPS levels of damage really amount up to a lot. You can actually do so much with her follow-up moves and just running QQ here is absolutely amazing. I think it's going to be a match made in heaven. QQ and Jade on the same team. I cannot wait to try that one out. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Maybe don't even run Sparkle. Just run someone else on the team. I still think it'll work because I do think that Jade is probably going to be pretty skill point efficient. And then what I think to be the best option in terms of a DPS for Jade is going to be Blade. Blade works almost perfectly well with her. Jade literally takes his HP away. He puts that into his follow-up attack. He hits all enemies with his follow-up attack, not to mention his enhanced base attack. This team is going to be so skill point rich. I don't even think you really, you're, you're gonna, you're never have to worry about skill points. Run Branya on this team with him, absolutely golden. But while we're on the topic of support characters, Rua May Robin, obviously the best two supports you can run with her. I honestly do think that Sparkle could fit into the equation here if you're running her with a QQ, like I mentioned before. So that's just for really that team though. Now, hopping into the support characters, or I guess sustain characters, I think Healer works the best here. I really don't think you should run an Adventuring here, even though Adventuring does give it crit damage bonus. She's not really taking use of his follow-up attacks much. His abilities are much better spent on like an actual dedicated single target follow-up team because you have to put the buff on him for the ability to actually activate. So that means you buff him with the move, gives his speed increase, and then from there you basically just keep whipping out follow-up attacks whenever he gets hit, right? Which could be a decent combo. It just it's okay. It depends on how you're running him, right? It could work, but I think the best overall option is to run a healer on the team. Really, any healer will work just because she is sapping HP away and you want to be able to top your HP off. Anyway guys that is going to do it for the teammate section now let's get into the moment you've been waiting for and that's subscribe to this youtube channel you might have gotten scammed by this little timestamp stamp here or you watched at this point in the video which you should be subscribed anyway if you've already watched through my fucking whatever nine minutes of copium i don't even know how long the video is right now how many of our long minutes of copium that was just subscribe to the channel for great content like this we shit on games we hate we love games we shit on characters we love on characters too we glaze them we we, we dick them down we, we do whatever there is in the game so yeah subscribe so you get cool content, please. I'm begging so we can do a giveaway, please. Anyway, gamers, back to the relics at hand here. Now, what I think to be her best relic set is actually going to be the new v Valorious Mask of the Northern Skies because it does give an attack bonus at a two-piece and at a four-piece is going to be giving a crit rate bonus, which she is going to need a lot of. On top of this, whenever you use a follow-up attack, you will be giving her increased damage to her ultimate move, which is really nice as well. Now, other sets you can run. Four-piece of the Quantum set can work. She gets a massive defense shred. Overall, I do think that will be the better set, especially if you're facing quantum weak enemies with her. Uh, I think it will give you a higher damage output just because of defense shred. Defense shred super, super OP. And depending on the teams you're running on, you could amplify that even more. But that is another option that you definitely could run. Now, if you have a break team, this is why I say this is the best set to farm because you're getting the break set for your break characters. And then you're getting this follow-up set for this follow-up character. And I assume this set will probably be best in slot for maybe another character that's coming down the road that maybe doesn't have shoes on, has a big ass sword, Maybe she's small and short in stature. Maybe she works well with the new March 7th. Maybe she's a physical type. Maybe she's a destruction type too. I don't know. Maybe she does though. Anyways, those are like the two best sets that I see running on her. You could also run the old follow-up set. Though I don't know how these stacks work just because I haven't played with her yet. I don't know how much charge you can actually get because you do need eight hits and a single follow-up attack to actually proc this off. So I don't know how efficient that's going to be, especially if she only hit three times. Then you're getting what, a 18% attack bonus? 
doesn't really make sense to me, but hey, you do you at the end of the day, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about the best in slot planner sets. Now, one might say that running the new planner set is the best in slot four. I actually kind of disagree with that. I personally prefer to run Sal Sato over this, just because if you can't get the crit rate you need on her, you're probably gonna run one Sal Sato, right? The problem with the new set is it doesn't give crit rate. And the thing with her is she already gives herself so much crit damage that this set is kind of irrelevant, even though it does give you increased damage dealt to your follow-up attacks, and it stacks up to five times, which is a massive increase there. I just think that the extra crit rate that you're getting and the damage bonus that you're getting to, first of all, follow-up attacks and ultimate moves, which is her main source of damage, is going to benefit her more in the long run than actually running this set. This is a good second option that I would say, though. So take that for what you will. Those are the best two sets. So let's go ahead ahead and talk about stats now because stats are the most important thing here right now as far as the boots go i recommend running either attack percent or speed boots i am personally going to run my attack boots i am running my firefly attack boots and she's fine so i think she's gonna be fine as well especially since her skill plays off the amount of turns that she goes through i kind of want to run her slow to save more sp on her so when she comes around she basic attacks i feel like that way we can run an attack percent boot on her make her follow-ups do more damage and then we're still getting around the same amount of damage anyways because let's be honest our other dps is probably putting in most of the lead work you probably want them to be fast she gives them a speed buff i think it'll be absolutely fine to run her on attack boot now if you have a problem with that, let me know in the comment section down below why you think that's an issue. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that body piece crit rate. I recommend crit right here. You want to make sure she's getting a good 2 to 1 ratio, especially since she's giving herself so much crit damage. Crit right here is going to be absolutely essential. But with that being said, if you're able to get a substantial crit rate stats from just building her out in the substats, then you, you can run crit damage here. And I think that'll be fine as well. For the rope, I do recommend energy regen rope, but a lot of sweat lords will probably run attack percent here to get more damage out. I'm swapping out the speed boots for attack boots and then swapping out rope for energy regen rope to make sure she's getting her ultimate back up as quickly as possible, especially because I think she'll be following up a lot. So this will be really, really good and efficient. Maybe, just maybe, she'll get her ultimate up quicker with running ERR up. Up here. If this does turn out to not do the damage you need to do, swap this out for attack percent rope, okay? That's what I'm going to say there. Attack percent will give you more damage than ERR potentially because if you're not getting the correct amount of follow-up attacks from her, it will not be worth it. Now, I will say an extra attack is worth it than a little bit of an attack bonus buff here. But if it's around the same amount of time that you're getting follow-up attacks, then it really doesn't matter too, too much. And when I say that, I mean enhanced follow-up attacks from the ultimate move. If you're able to get it quicker, then you're obviously getting more damage that. Anyways, on the orb, quantum damage orb, very easy, very sweet, very simple. Now, let's go ahead and talk about those subby stats because subsets are super important as well. Number one, number two, crit rate, crit damage. Number three is going to be attack percentage. And number four is going to be speed. Speed is going to be more important if you decide to run a speed boot and you want her to run fast, then run speed in the subsets here. For me, I'm probably not going to run much speed with mine. Maybe if I get a few strays here and there, I'll run it. But for the most part, I'm going to be running mine crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage. Now, as far as these recommended stats, I'll show the recommended stats on screen now. These are the stats that you're going to be wanting to aim for when farming for a jade. 70% crit rate, 140% crit damage minimum. These are all minimums. And then obviously 134 speed as well if you're running her with a speed boot and you want her to be a bit faster. Anyways, gamers, that's going to do it for today's video. Did you enjoy my little breakdown pre-analysis of jade? Are you excited for jade? Are you pulling on her? Are you excited for Zenla Zone Zero? Because I do have more content coming out on that in the near future. Anyways, gamers. That's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one later. Bye-bye.